Hey, what's going on, guys? Just a quick video. I uh, just saw Dustin's video on the for uh, I can't ever say it. The Furwella <laughs> catfish, and uh, it's named after the guy that found it. I I don't. I've always been fascinated by them. That they, if you're in a bigger city, uh, they're pretty common in the pet stores. Uh, this is a female right here, and they get confused a lot with. Uh, You'll see whiptail catfish and other catfish that are kind of the sucker mouth. But the, the thing that makes them, the, the common name, well, the non, well, the, the name I'm used to seeing, twig catfish. And, and I, uh, it's funny, I've, I've seen whiptail catfish and like you see the banjo catfish. I've seen a lot of different catfish where they get them confused. But the huge thing is, and this is a female right here, is they have this little Pinocchio nose. Um, and that is a female, and you can see how smooth it is. And if you look at, I've got a male right here, and he's about, he's really huge. But if you notice, his, I want to say it's a proboscis, is what they call it. But if you look really close, what you'll see is it had he has whiskers and let's see ah oh, there we go get a really good picture of him here if you see the whiskers got little white white hair right there and that is the male and to give you an idea how big he is i mean he he's huge so i mean that driftwood that's a that that's a two foot vertical uh he's taking up a good space of that so like if i had a ruler uh, I don't see a ruler anywhere. You just have to take my word for it. But he, he's easily pushing about, oh, I don't know, eight or nine inches. Um, one of my favorite fish, hands down. I've always thought they were unusual. This is a smaller female here. You can see her clearing the, cleaning the glass. Sorry. And then if you look, here's a really good side angle. And that's what they look like. They're just slender and thin. And they love driftwood. If you get this fish, uh, you need to have a piece of driftwood in your tank because they like to chew on it. I don't know why. The one danger with this fish, just so your head's up, if you do a water change, I use prime. Uh, when I do water change and I go a little over, this fish is very sensitive if you're doing heavy water changes. If you don't chlorinate your water correctly, uh, you can lose one of those. That's one of the known uh, issues with that fish. That's really the only issue. They will eat plants, <laughs> and just to give you an idea, this is what happens. That's, that's these guys, and he, he tends to feed at night, the big guy, and he'll get up there and he'll just he'll eat those clean, and then you can see how he's working on that one back there, uh, and I see him chewing on my sword some too, uh, but that's just kind of it. Great fish. They're native of South America. Uh, you can see how it's just sitting there like a stick. Uh, I've drained this tank before. I shouldn't say drain. When I do a water change, uh, if the water goes below that level, sometimes they'll even cling on. You need to be careful. They'll be sticking on a piece of driftwood, and you just need to visually check and make sure as the water goes down that they don't sit somewhere and uh, not let go and go in the water. But uh, the discus are doing great. I'm very happy about moving this couple in here. A little bit of cichlid, you know, aggression, which is normal. But they're all coming out. So they're hanging out more. Uh, in the front more, it's all good. Uh, and an update on these guys, they're looking a whole lot better. Uh, the ick issue is almost all but cleared up. I've got a female that's got some issues on her. But other than that, everybody else is looking stellar. And this guy, look at the color on him. But um, I put my UV sterilizer uh, in this tank uh, because they had ick. So they're, they're clearing up. It's been a few days that UV sterilizer is in there running. And then just to give you an idea, you can see how big the discus is over here. But this guy's pretty good size. Uh, but hey, happy Sunday. Uh, there's the female. I got a female twig right back there. And you can see how she looks like a stick, if you can see her right through here. 
and her snout's smooth, and that's how I know that's a female. And to give you an idea, just you want to see something crazy, watch this. This is how easy they are to catch. Another thing I love about this fish. I mean, if I wanted to grab him, watch this. So you can see he's very docile. See his snout? Ooh. But see how he looks like a stick? See how he's put his fins out for protection? And then look at his snout. See the whiskers? Great fish. I'm just going to let him go. Very easy to catch. Easiest fish to catch you'll ever own. And uh, a lot of times I'll catch those guys and I'll put a cucumber down and slice it for them. And I'll just go and pick him up and uh, put him on some cucumber. And uh, he's pretty happy. He's an easy going guy. And here's a good, good picture of him. But that is a Farwella catfish, otherwise known as a twig catfish. Camouflage on this guy is amazing. Look at the color on this guy. I mean, he literally looks like a stick. Oh, now he's getting in the... But see the proboscis? It's called a proboscis, and it's got the whiskers on it. Great fish. Love it. Uh, one of my favorite. So, anyway. He's, he's a cool dude. And this little female, she's so much smaller than those two in there, but uh, really happy with them. But hey, happy Sunday. You guys have a great week. I got a bunch of videos to put up. I've just been so busy. It's been crazy, but uh, uh, school started last week for the kids, so all in crazy. But hey, thanks for watching. You guys have a great week. You know, I actually got to do water changes. I haven't even done a water change for this weekend, but uh, there's the 120. There's the 33, and I am loving the Threadfin Rainbows in this tank with my uh, cherry shrimp in here. They're all hanging out, and they're feeling pretty safe, so it's all good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Later. See you.